Sharing details of his proposed $7.2 trillion budget. That includes money for housing, tax breaks for families, and border security. It also includes proposals to lower costs for families and investments in U.S. manufacturing. It would also raise taxes on large corporations and proposes a minimum 25% tax on billionaires. The White House says it cut the deficit by around three, it would cut the deficit by around $3 trillion over the course of 10 years. That budget also includes almost $5 billion to be put in an emergency fund for border security if the United States was to see many more surges in migrant arrivals. The president's budget has little chance, though, of getting enough support in Congress to pass. Nine news related. Shalom, but I was with nine news. Nine news relating to uh, proposal of seven point two or seven point three trillion dollars for aid for families, cu- cu- tax breaks on households, corporations, taxes on, cu- on wealthy, um, then really the border situation as well, border security situation. So campaigns for spending tax goals and. Uh, and border security and emergency money set aside relating to uh, the border situation. Uh, Biden's 7.3 trillion budget is campaign pitch for spending tax goals. Uh, 7.3 trillion budget for FY fiscal year 2025 to Congress. Let me see, read this. Four hours ago, Reuters. So he's pitching for a 7.3 trillion budget uh, campaign relating to spending goals, tax goals, cuts, and now aid and relating to uh, families and different families, um, and um, but most of all relating to the uh, border security. So he's pitching that. States has the biggest budget. Japan, China, Germany. Scripture talks about um, be not ignorant, be not ignorant, ignorant of anything great or small. Relating to Sirach five and fifteen. Then that ignorant goes to be in general, be not ignorant of anything great or small, man. So he's proposing relating to 7.3 trillion, man. So most likely he's not going to get a whole lot of support, possibly. This is already division relating to, you know, um, between the Democrats and Republicans anyway. Um, As far as getting certain things done, so um, so it's pretty much a, um, you know, going to be a very difficult sell to sell to you know, both sides. Let me get this real quick. So rock. Five and fifteen.
be not ignorant of anything in a great matter or small. So be not ignorant relating to in general matters great or small. Right? Um, Habakkuk 2. Because you have, uh, what, 34 trillion? I'll take that debt up to almost uh, 41 and plus, but if they propose that as some change, but um, two and six shall not all these take up a parable against him, man, and a taunting proverb against him, and saying, Woe to him that increases that which is not his, man. That's the ones in position of power. It's a warning for the ones in a position of power, man. How long? And to him that laid of himself up thick clay. So, thick clay. Accumulation of different things over the years. You know what I mean? This this thing, this um, this debt, man. And the guise of, um, to make it look like wealth by just continuous printing of money, but it's actually just accruing more debt. You know what I mean? That's that thick clay. Um, GNT. Six. We read a few scriptures back. Wealth is deceitful. Greedy people are proud and restless like death itself. They never satisfy. They have a satiable the avarice, insatiable appetite for wanting more and more, man. But they never have enough, man. That is why they're, they conquer nations after nations for themselves. For example, of that, use it, um, these other countries, man, you know, um, to find forms of justifications to invade these other countries, to um, subjugate, subject the people. And take their resources, man. And part of that they use is um, war and other tactics they use to do that, man. They've been doing that and doing that since um, for uh, for centuries, man. You know what I mean? Um, let me see. They conquer. They conquer. The conquer people will taunt their conquerors. And show their scorn for them, and so they're going to show their dis disdain for them. Uh, they will say, "You take what isn't yours, man. That woe to you that takes the, um, that um, has stolen something that's not yours." A KJV, man. You know, lands, resources, things that's not yours, they're theirs, man. But you are doomed. How long will you go on getting riches by forcing your debtors to pay up? You know, he's, uh, that's a parable, that's a warning, that's a proverb, and a taunting for them in the position of power. Man. Let me get another scripture, James 5. This is the ones in the position of power, man. You know? James uh, 5. Because they they proposing a 7.3, 7.2 to 7.3 trillion dollar debt for what fiscal year 2025 is already at 34 now. You know what I mean? Every 90 days or 100 days is one trillion. You know what I mean? So they're adding and adding and adding and adding and adding, man. You know what I mean? So. Uh, 
eventually something's going to happen regarding, you know, that economy, man. The dollar's, um, you know, depreciating, losing its value, losing its, um, its um, financial um, um, dominance, man. It's losing its financial dominance, it's, um, it's, it's losing its, um, its um, sovereignty relating to internationally, man. You know, these other nations are pretty much denouncing the dollar, man. So, it's just a matter of time, man. You know what I mean? Go to now, ye rich men, weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. So, that's a warning to the rich, man. Go back to the scripture previously, warning to those who uh, who increase that which is not his. You know what I mean? And, um, and relating to... Um, you know, accumulation relating to that thick clay, man. Your riches are corrupted. Your garments are moth-eaten with holes in it, man. It's compromised. It's tainted. It's moth-eaten. Holes in it, man. Your gold, your gold and silver is cankered, and the, and the rust of them shall be a witness against you. So that's going to be a testimony against you. They shall eat your flesh as it were fire, and ye have heaped up treasures together for the last days, man. So that's the ones in a position of power, man. You know what I mean? So all these things that has been done relating to the ones in a position of power is going to be, it's going to be, it's going to be a witness, a testimony against them, man. Behold, the hires of the laborers who have reaped down your fields, which is of you, you kept back by fraud, man. So the ones you forced labored, forced labor to make you build up things, uh, things, accumulate things that that really wasn't yours, you know what I mean, which you have taken, um, using them forcefully and not co uh, compensating for them, you know what I mean, um, by fraud, by violence, by deceit, they crieth, and the cries of which have reaped into the ears of the Lord Sabaoth, you know what I mean, the righteous compl complain continually, man. So this is the forms of the unrighteousness, the wickedness they have at the expense of using certain people, man. You know what I mean? You have lived lived in pleasure on earth because the earth has been given to the hands of you. You're in a position of power. Scripture talks about they're they're not they're not um, um what's that scripture um they're not a, they're not in trouble as other men. They're not in trouble as other men because they're they have the means, the resources, and they're in a the position of power. And then once and ye have nourished your hearts, which is your mind, as in a day of slaughter. Ye have condemned and killed the just ones as the righteous, and he doth not resist you. You know, and that relates to historically what you have done to certain groups of people, you know what I mean, through fraud, violence, and deceit, you know what I mean? at the means and also taking those lands, those resources and, and different things from those people, things that weren't yours, that was theirs, and you made it yourself, man. You made it you made it to become yours, man. Um be patient therefore, brother, into the into the coming of the Lord, which goes to tolerate and suffer and endure. Behold, the husband will wait in the precious fruits of the earth and have long patience for it until he receive the early and latter rain. Man. But ye also be also patient, establish your hearts and your minds for the coming of the Lord draw of night, which means is coming near, man. Indi uh, indication, you know, be um, a recompense, man. For all was done, man. That's what that goes to, man. You know? Um, I'll read it down. Grudge not one against another, your brethren, lest ye be condemned. Behold, that goes to forgive thy brother. Uh, uh, scripture talks about uh, how many times related to forgiving thy brother. I believe seven times seven. And scripture talks about pretty much you can always continuously forgive your brethren. Uh, lest ye be condemned. Behold, the judge standeth before the door. Take my brethren, the prophets who have spoken in the name of the Lord, which is a specific name, Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh Shai. Um, for he he always he always exists, ancient of days, raised to Yahweh. 
the Yahushai represents um, um, the Redeemer, um, for he's delivered a Redeemer to what? To redeem his people, man. Read it again. Um, Take my brother, the prophets who have spoken in the name of the Lord, for example, of the suffering and affliction and the patience that goes to tolerating the suffering and affliction relating to um, rede redemption, vindication, recompense, and most of all, vengeance by Yahweh Hashem Yasha. Behold, we count them happy, which endure, and ye have heard of the patience of Job, and have seen the end of the Lord, and the Lord is very pitiful and tender of mercy. So, it's going to be a recompense for, uh, for certain things that were done to certain groups and categories of people historically, you know what I mean? And a recompense to the ones in the position of power, man. It's going to be a recompense to them. You know what I mean? They're going to receive double, as scripture says, in Revelation. Um, so, this relating to this, um, this is something quick, real quick. I'm going to make it too long. So he proposes relating to, uh, let me get that video real quick. When you call Morgan & Morgan America's largest injury. So he proposes relating to, the president's proposal includes for housing, tax breaks for families, the border security, and it would also raise taxes on large corporations. Proposals of a minimum of 25 percent tax on being as because the more they make, the more they should pay. But instead of putting the burden on ones who the 99 percent who make less and put the backs on on, the, on them to make pay pay more when the uh, one percent these corporations make a lot more, but they pay less tax. But so it needs to be a balance. But. Uh, Scripture talks about false balance is abomination to the Lord, but a just ways is delight. You know what I mean? So, uh, where I left off at. Yeah, the president's proposal budget includes money for housing, tax breaks, families, border security, also raises taxes on the large corporations and proposes a minimal 25% tax on billionaires. The budget proposal stands a uh, little chance of passing in Congress. They're not going to pass it, man. Republicans and Democrats are uh, relating to that's too much money, man. It's already, the deficit's already high. You know what I mean? So it's going to be that divide, man. You know what I mean? Say, um, let me get that real quick. Matthew's um, 12 and uh, 25. Let me get it. Yahweh knew their, their thoughts and said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. Let me get 26 verse. Here we go. We'll read it again. Yahusha knew their thoughts and said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself will be in ruin. And every city and household divided against itself it will not stand. If Satan drives out Satan, and he's divided against himself, how can his kingdom stand? And so the division between Satan and Satan, that's the two that's the two that's the carnal counterparts on earth, man. You know, they're in the position of power. That's the division. So it's going to come to a ruin, man. If they're divided against themselves, it's going to be ruined. And eventually it will fall, man. Let me get um, Luke. Um, Mark, let me get Mark 3. Get real fast. 
three and uh there we go. And he called unto him, and he called unto him, and said in and said in them in parables, How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom divided against itself, a kingdom cannot stand. And if a house divided against itself, a house cannot stand. If Satan rise up against himself, Satan gets versus Satan, be divided. He cannot stand but have an end. So he's going to, so that division, rising up against himself, you know, not in agreement, not in accordance, not in, you know, accordance to one, or in the same page, rising up against one another, eventually their kingdom's not going to stand but have what? An end. And that's what you're seeing, man. So you're seeing the breakdown of Babylon falling. That great mighty city is falling. One hour thy judgment come. And this is something quick. I hope it helps. Give all praise. Yahweh Bashim Yahshua Bashim Rakakadash. Honor us to men in truth. One down and like minded ones teach us truth and knowledge. So we can know this truth and knowledge. And the Wadi Yahweh Bashim Yahshua. Men in truth teaching us knowledge. And like minded ones. So we can know this knowledge. Truth and knowledge. And call your Yabashim Yahshua Bashim Rakakadash. Give all praise, y'all. Bashim, 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 y'